speed and hard. But I feel like now that you put me under the pressure, you get those little key bits of information. Right, we can build from that. <laughs> Subsurface baits, what do you reckon is the best way to get them? Favourite way to get them? Not necessarily you mean the most like productive. Not the most, necessarily the most effective, just my favourite way. Yeah, the favourite way to catch them. So not, not necessarily the thing that gets the most, but the way that you would rather catch a fish. I, I would probably say it's probably got to be a glide bait. Because the reason that everyone likes top water fishing is there's this big visual explosive aspect. To that technique when they eat it like that's the that's the deal everyone yeah. loves the fact that these things swim up and boof nail something off the top and i feel like glide bait fishing has those aspects as well well a lot of it's so driven by shallow water so yeah. you're fishing them you're not fishing them weighted you're fishing them shallow a lot of the time you can see them and the other thing is it's a like when you glide bait, it's not necessarily the glide as well. Like it's the whole process of doing it is so engaging and so involved, much the same as top water fishing. When you're fishing a top water, the whole time you're watching it with that anticipation, you can see what your bait's doing. Glide baiting's almost exactly the same. Yeah, a lot yeah, of the yeah. time you're watching that bait dance its way back, just envisioning that giant behind it. And it's so, you've got to be so in tune with it so in tune with what your bait's doing and it like captivates you the whole time yeah. that you're actually and I going think about fishing it sort of goes both because I also think that that's one of the most effective ways to catch them as well yeah but if I was like you know if I knew that they were biting and I wanted to just really enjoy it and get stuck right into it and just immerse myself in what's going on I feel like I'm the most connected to what I'm doing and how I'm getting to respond to my presentation when I'm fishing a glide bait. That, to me, is... You get a real satisfaction. Yeah, you know? it's, a, it's a real crazy sort of thing because it's not that... I mean, it's a... Slow rolling something is a super effective way to catch fish. We know that. That's it's hard. Monotonous. Like it's monotonous. It does get monotonous. And not only that, we know that there are times where it just doesn't work. Like, yeah. it's just not the... It's not the thing that they're looking for they, they need, need that, that trigger trigger point exactly right they need that thing that is the, the the catalyst moment for them to just make that decision and eat and everyone regardless of what it is doesn't matter what species we enjoy reaction bites we enjoy that principle that the fish wasn't necessarily hungry it was angry that's yeah. cool you know what i mean so you can apply that a lot of the time to glide bait fishing it's this perfect balance between, between finesse and, and reaction exactly right because it's, it's such a quiet natural finesse bait but when you're given it those hits and those turns and that's 100 percent creating that reaction yep. bite, like when that bait turns head on and i think about you know a few years back when you sort of started using it those trips to Copeton where you seem to get a lot of fish that were just following. Like, yep. and you'd have them follow you all the way to the boat, the water's clear, you can see them. And then everything sort of started to make sense, you know, and we fish that way with every other bait with like little, you know, turn to the handle, making the bait do something to make that fish react. Something erratic, And yep. with the swim bait game, it was all like, you know, the slow rolling and that sort of thing. And then it all sort of just started making sense with the glide bait sort of things that we needed that same Thing to happen with that bigger bait, that natural fish profile, we needed that turn or that change in direction or something like that to trigger that the normal, trigger that bite. Point. Exactly, and the the big part of that is all of those little moments that you don't ordinarily see with traditional presentation. When I say traditional, I mean like things other than a glide bait. Yeah. It's just the easiest way to reference it. But the little stuff like people always getting bit in the boat and yeah. and. Um, you know, you, you throw on a square bill or something like that or any crankbait or anything really and it comes over a bit of cover. You bump into a log and you go, oh, it's a snag and then crunch, you get absolutely yeah. nailed. Those principles are exactly the same. Direction changes. Direction right? changes, cadence changes, anything, anything at all. Something 
slightly unusual from that normal thing that they're doing because that curiosity that draws them in there for them to have a look it's it's like that that tipping point that they need to yeah. make that decision they're and, waiting for opportunity as well and you say about like the you know people getting eaten at the boat i don't think a lot of people realize that that you know their baits traveling at let's say two meters all the way and then all of a sudden it goes like it goes that. up exactly yeah. and that's that fish exactly has got to go right. oh, like that that's a change i've got to eat it right like right now it's yeah just get, you know yeah, that and when is you're fishing real. that yeah you're fishing that glide bait and you're doing that at so many stages of the retrieve it's not just when the bait's getting closer to the bait and your line angle's changing you're making it do it multiple times you're making it change direction exactly. multiple times yeah the whole exactly retrieve. and the other thing with the that there's two really with like anything else people get bit at the boat because a lot of the time someone casts and then they move a little bit with the yeah. electric or whatever it might yeah, be. They see that. that as a good opportunity to do it. And then they begin their retrieve. So it's cast at a particular line. They begin their retrieve. They start rolling it. It gets halfway out or whatever it may be. So the, the path that that presentation is traveling in is now dynamic. It's not yeah. one dimension. It's not going in one straight line and slightly changing depths. There's two drastic moments there Yep. When it comes up towards the boat, not only is it going from that, you know, whatever it might be, two meters or something like that, goes and then very steeply becomes more shallow. And yeah. but also there's a, a, a horizontal change as well because you've just moved the boat, so it was running on that plane and yeah, then it's slightly curved. You see the, the big bait guys in the states do it a lot. You know, it's deliberate. it's deliberately, it's yeah, deliberate. they will make they are a giant that. pass. That's the moment they're paying the most attention. Yep, free spool it, then they drive, let's say, to the bank or something like that, and then their bait's and, you yeah, know, creating and this. We often kind of um, attribute that to like that long lining kind of yeah. kind of thing, but it's not necessarily. It's it's the fact that they've now just created a, a, a dynamic presentation. It's not just traveling in that one line. And a glide bait, I, I, I apply that stuff to it as well, but yeah. you can do that from start to finish throughout yep. the entirety of your retrieve. Yeah. It's the basic principle. It doesn't principle. go in a straight line. It's <laughs> the basic principle of that presentation. And there's that massive difference between something, you know, just swimming along like this yep. compared to something that literally goes two feet to the left and then two feet to the right or a foot to the left, a foot to the right. and and is able to turn around and stuff like that and you know because you can see your line move so you're yeah. aware that this thing's facing that way you can steer them you yep. can literally yeah, stroke you it i'll do a lighter stroke one way and then do oh, a heavier stroke to the right to, to to get it closer to that bit of cover yep and then you know that the next you know high percentage point in your retrieve is slightly over to the left you can you can, you can work it, it back over, over to the yeah. left it's um it's nuts and then the other big thing i think is that how much we see and how common it is fish eating things head first well yeah and we we see cod as being this giant predator and they are and they can engulf fish in every which way a lot of the glide Definitely. baits we're using are big a lot of the bait they're eating is big and they can eat small bait no matter what way it's facing but there's bigger opportunities like it makes sense that these spiky little fish that they're eating, they're eating them head first. And yeah. they're, you know, they're going down the right way. They're going down the right straight way. Straight down. Definitely. And just that. And it's easier. Yeah. Like not only the, the physical, you know, principle of something being spiky going down their, down their neck, let's say that that doesn't even count. It's easier to catch something if the only way it can swim is to you. Is <laughs> further down your yeah, mouth. Yeah. And it's, um, and it's something that the same thing, like the, the Yankees push a lot as well, being well aware of that. The little trigger points like eyes and things like that. Yep. Dave. I remember watching Palinic a video with him saying how he'll he'll literally put eyes on, on the, the back, back of, of the his bait. lure. Yep. The back of his lure, because it's a strike point. And they recognize that, all right, the eyes, that's what we're after, because we know that if we come up crush that thing and open our mouth to reposition which we see cod do that all, all the time you, yeah. you watch someone's slow-mo video in their fish tank yeah they crunch it open the mouth reposition all the time it's that's a thing that absolutely oh. happens 
if you have to reposition a fish and its head's out, it's chances are, yeah, to, you chance know, it's higher chance it can get away. If yeah. its head's in, it's going down the pipe. Yeah. And it is such a trigger for a man. Oh, like, can yeah. you imagine? Like, I always just visualize it like that joint, and we've seen it happen. You know, what we've, I mean? watched we've watched them it ignore it yeah. until it turns. And it soon, like the thing is, I don't think a lot of people understand as well how the glide works. So they chuck it out and they go, oh, "That's a bit crap." Wind it, and it, it, it just kind of meanders about yeah. a little bit. So and, without having that complete understanding of the bait, but you know, you see the bait turn. It literally. It doesn't just turn around and stop. It turns. You give it slack, and it, it pushes back. So that that fish is wallowing it. It turns, and it's all but nudging it in the face. Exactly. Like, whether they want to eat it or not, when that happens, it's like, oh, what's well, there? Uh, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just straight away, like it's like, bang. There, there's the chance. I'll take it. So it's it's such that reaction side of it, and the hit. Oh, the they absolutely it smoke is. them, man. Oh, when you pause it and you just give it that, like. You know, you give it that twitch and it turns and they eat it. It's that it's like slight moment else. of slack line. It's like they yeah. can get a run up and absolutely <laughs> smash it. But the uh, the other part of that is not necessarily what way the fish is, the, well, what they think is a fish is facing. But the drawing power of these lures is beyond what most other lures are, yeah. even though they're quiet, even though they're not necessarily bumping into anything. Because, yeah. And this is one of the biggest... Uh, principles that I kind of once I wrapped my head around that I was like oh well that's that's a key how much ground it's covering how much ground it's covering man because when you get something that's swimming in a straight line right let's yeah. pretend for a moment for the sake of the argument that there's a fish directly behind it that profile that it's looking at is the, very the same thing straight yeah. up the thinnest straight up the bum of it there's not a great deal there to see there's not a great deal of silhouette being presented this thing moving on that 180 degree axis or yeah. 360 degree axis is presenting its profile to Every way, yeah. a 360 degree yep. like it's diameter all the way around it. So, so no around. matter where any of those fish are sitting, they get to have a, a complete look at it. And yep. the drawing power is just amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. They man. can be out to the side, they see it head on, side on, tail on, the whole lot. They're behind it, they see it the exact same way. That's in front exactly, of it, they see it the that's, same that's way. Exactly and we, my point, we no talk about the, the drawing power with like that straight line bait. Let's say it has a drawing circle of two meters. Yeah, as yeah. As soon as the glide bait glides two feet that way, you've now got two meters and two feet, plus it goes that way, so you've got that again. That the other way, side. Exactly. And it's the like other, it the turns other thing, your radius into massive area that that thing's pulling fish from you. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the other thing that you kind of have to think about is potentially a glide bait's the only one that has a circle radius. You know what I mean? Because the other ones, they're more likely to be able to recognise it as a fish from side on. So it's probably more like a rectangle than anything. You know what I mean? And like, you know, before we were saying what's the favourite way to catch it? Not necessarily the most productive thinking about it you know a glide bait's been extremely productive for us oh. over the years and when you think about the drawing power of it or not when you when you talk about maybe a search bait or something like that if you're talking about covering area i know they're a pretty slow bait to fish but you're covering twice as much area per duck that's exactly so right it's, it's it might more take efficient you a little bit, yeah it's more efficient so it's a it's an extremely efficient way to cover shallow ground we know that like deep water they've got their limitations but you know, you've, you've also got that drawing power the other way as yes. well because it's covering so much, yeah. so much area. But they're an amazing bait, like it's such an efficient bait to fish, especially in those like on shallow flats. Exactly what we do for cod fishing, exactly what most people do for cod fishing. They're one of the ultimate baits to be doing, and, and they're so untouched on yeah, Australia. Yeah, and I think that's probably the big thing. Like the doors, you have to really be kicked down by everyone, which I think they're probably sort of. I mean, even us, of, really. it's on the cusp, you know what I mean? Everyone's yeah. going to realise soon that there's a big difference. It's not just a little difference. It's not yeah. something that's aesthetic, like this thing has two joints or no joints compared to four. And it's, there's, a, there's a huge difference in fundamental principle of what that thing's doing in comparison to something that just, you know, yeah. like the rest of the swim baits we use. Yeah. Um, and I think once people 
recognize that firstly and then get over this silly little weird hump that I think we had to get over too that's just like slow down yeah. stop like just slow down yeah. because you're doing that you, you're going you, you're trying to cover you've got the to ground pay a lot of attention. and you've got to pay a lot of attention to what's going on and that first thing when you cast it out and you wind it and, and you're like well if I fish this quick it just doesn't look good it feels yeah. weird it's and there are ways to fish it quick but it's still patient yeah if that makes sense yeah, like, you still, you still, still got to be patient you still have to yeah. wait and then you pick your moments and you know right from that rock to this stump you know being 20 feet I can really get into it here and really like try and produce something yep. super responsive and super aggressive but and yep. you can't be from the moment the lure hits the water to the moment it gets back to the boat you can't do that quick that's no, not that's not there's a fast parts process. where you can to you know yeah, sections yeah. of your retrieve or situations where you can well it's like we're saying from the Australian like the Australian side but not picking up it's obviously massive in the States oh. but the other thing I've noticed is there's more because the problem with glide baits are the good ones carry on high price point like if you're yes. getting a cheap glide bait there's a good chance it doesn't work that great like yeah. it doesn't do what it's meant to do brilliantly so I see a lot of like Australian bait makers starting to go that way as well. Yeah, it's lines, good. And people are more open to spending good money on it. But it also shows with the glide bait side and appreciation for that particular style of lure is how much development and testing goes it's into making one. Like the time. balance and that getting a single jointed you know bait to do what that does and be weighted perfectly evenly. yeah to secure does. dead level dead not level. nose down not, definitely not nose up like yeah. but you can it. get a swim bait a little bit wrong and it'll still swim when you wind it in a straight line yeah, you know what I mean it doesn't go. matter how it, how it sinks or whatever where it is all of that with a glide bait has to be spot on because there's so much pause here there's so yeah the tolerance have there it. between something that's working and, an, and a bit of a piece of rubbish yeah. pretty well is really really small yeah Yep. and there's some yeah there's some unbelievable baits on the market they carry a bit of a high price point but they're worth having and they're not something you lose nah you don't you, unless you're casting them off like oh. you don't lose man that is yeah so <coughs> I think it's only a matter of time before the Australian side of it and I reckon it's going to boom like I think Definitely. people are going to catch on they need more educated in what they do and the Australian and products like exactly it. like you just said are really going to start taking those next few quick yeah. steps and and leaps to really nail in it. I think um, I just think as a learning tool, man, this they're, they're so important because at the start, like when we were using them, we were just seeing fish. That was like we were all of a sudden we're using that, and you're getting forty percent more follows. Yeah, and it's like what's going on here? And well, that's another big point too because we know that in the states, tournament anglers use them as to a, find them. Yeah, to find to find yeah. bigger fish, they were like, right, you know, this is what we're going to do. I mean, that's a that's a, that's a known thing. It's a searching tool, yeah, not necessarily a catching tool. It comes out of that drawing power as well, exactly, because of the drawing power, because of how imposing this lure is. I think is a real um, that's a, that's a real deal. And when when we kind of noticed that, it led me into learning a bunch of new and important nuances about other techniques like the thing at the boat that we were just talking about yeah. glide baits really really taught me aside from a few you know particular scenarios that occurred but glide baits is a thing I never pick my lure out of the water like I yeah, never yeah, finish my retrieve yeah. and pick it up it no never ever ever yeah. I mean even when I do I go what are you doing like why yeah. would you do you know better than that because of the amount of times that you were winding and you looked up where, where you're about to send it the next cast yeah and you go and you see a boil or you hear a bo- or something there's a splash or you get bit and you're not paying attention now that last little part of that retrieve that first bit i mean the whole thing i'm paying attention the whole time but we know that where the money is yeah all the time you know what you're casting at and then that last part to me is almost just as important as the first bit because there's just something it's about the last that chance, isn't it? major really directional like... change. It's the last chance. The other thing is fish drive things to the surface to, to make it. it easier to eat them. Yep. That's fact. We know that because it's a barrier. 
It's it's the same as pinning them up against the rock wall to eat them. It's the same thing. They can't go any further than the surface of the water. Freshwater fish do it exactly the same as plating and whatnot do it as well. Exactly like they right. Use, they use those sorts of things to, to hunt. Like they're not silly. Yeah. They know that that's there's no getting away from it. So and then it, so you think about the point in time when we had our <laughs> first conversations about leaving it in there and playing with it for a little bit before you pick it up and cast the net. How many more fish have we caught at our feet yeah. or at the gunnel since we started doing it? It's crazy, absolutely yep. crazy. And a glide date's the best thing for it. Yeah, 100%. It's absolutely nuts. And just all of those aspects about it makes it the thing that I really like. You know, if I had my way, that's what that's what I'm doing. And they got some <coughs> freaky ability to catch giants. Catch big, big, just big catch fish. Big fish. Big fish. Yeah. And the, the other cool thing about it is too, Little, little, like little ones still eat it. Yeah, and, and they'll eat like a two feet. And it's something that like really hammered home to me because you notice how a lot of the time dudes will catch a, a, a little fish on a huge lure and hold it up and go, what was this thing thinking? Yeah. And I used to do it too. I'm like, this is crazy. I can't believe that like this lure is bigger than that fish and he tried to eat it. But when you really think about it, how does that fish know oh, how big how does yeah. it know how big it is? They don't have yeah. mirrors. The only way that they can be aware of what they're capable of consuming or not is, to give them a go. is trial and error. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to meet a fish that can constantly consume, you know, uh, between a 200 and 300 milliliter bait fish. Yeah. Does it all the time. Knows that that's plausible. Yeah, it's able to do it, yeah. Up to a certain point. Like, and then, so at what point do they realize they're born, they eat things, and then they go, well, what about this one? Yeah. I don't think they're that self-aware to know that they're tiny compared to other ones without experience. Yeah. And it's the same with like top water bites. Oh, half the time they don't know what it is. And it's yeah. like, oh, what's that? Yeah, what's I'll, that? I'll try and eat it. Yeah. Crunch it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, but same thing happens I think, water. I, I think it's it's one of those things that like, I used to do it. I used to go, this is crazy. Like, why would that fit? But no, nah, it's not. It's not that yeah. crazy. They've got to do it somehow. And I mean, the other aspect of it is we're always just thinking that they're trying to eat it. Yeah. Rather than get rid Rather of it. Rather than headbutt it yeah. or, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're just trying to get rid of it or, or and just interact with it. That ties in with that same thing we always say where you might be fishing a waterway that's full of bonings, right? And you use it. Let's say we're using a glide bait that looks like a trout. If you chuck trout in that lake, they're going to eat them. They're yeah, yeah, that's them. exactly They've right. They've seen them before and it's the same as like the size thing. They don't know, they might not know what it is or how big it is compared to them. They're still going to have a crack, you know, like a lot of the time. Yeah, so and that's something they don't that, know like, unless they give it, give it a it's go. All, all of a night punches that home really hard. Yeah. A lot of the times when people go, "Oh, should I throw a trout pattern in my lake that has no trout?" It's like, what do you think would happen? Yeah, you what do you think would happen if you put a trout? It's going to get slaughtered. So of course there are just times when it's more effective and yeah. or less effective. You know what I mean? If they're really getting stuck right in to eating bonies or stuck right into eating red fins. They're tuned in on it. You want to be doing that. You want to be doing that. You want to be doing that. And but I mean, there's also the other I mean, none of it's set in stone. I mean it's fishing at the end of the day. But then there's also the other aspect of it that there's a million bonies and how does your if you're matching the hats that well, how does yours stand, stand out, out from the rest over the rest of them? Yeah. So it's a it's an interesting sort of thing. But I think um, I've always found that to be a funny little thing that people continuously do and I just don't think they quite have realised yet that that's pretty well all there is to it. They've got no idea. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. No, I'd have to agree with you. I think it's it's up there. It's one of the best ways to get it. And it's so visual too. Yeah. Like, it's sick. Absolutely sick. Looking forward to some people really starting to dial in on it. Yeah, see it grow. See Spread a bit people. throughout the country and people are just really going to crush it, man. Yeah, and it'll grow technique and <coughs> new ways to do it as well. Like it'll grow everything. The same, so way it did so for, the same way it did for us when we yeah. first did our toe in it. It grows the whole spectrum yeah. of, you know, fishing tools that you have in your arsenal. Which, I mean, anything does that. You can learn things about swim bait from fishing a crankbait. It's yeah. not... I mean, that's not that much of a reach. But there's something about glide bait fishing that really sets it off. Makes sense. It off. Makes sense, really. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's just sick. Like I said, I, I want to know... I want to feel as though I did it. 
why I caught that fish. It wasn't, you know, and you it's, it's kind of like the cruising around. Yeah, around it's like you know, like it's kind of like the, the the argument with trolling or something like that. Yeah, I want uh, it's cast and retrieve. What I did, I implicated that action. I imparted yeah. that action on that lure, and that's what convinced the fish to eat it. So yeah. it's rewarding. It's so yeah, so it, you just get that little bit of extra reward out of it. Um, and not only that, a lot of them are. A lot of those light baits are so technologically advanced. Like you, you look at the depths, and and people look at it and go, oh, "Yeah, you know, that's a really expensive lure." But then you get there and really you look get at it deep with it, and it's that side like that little nuts. little bean side, little knocker, just like, sitting in there humming, just doing its thing. And how many people do we know that have owned them? And you go, oh, what about that? Well, I'm inside of them. They go, yeah, you know, yeah, what? Yeah. And then you put it in the hand and hit it and it goes, Shh. Like, it's That's crazy yeah. thinking ahead of like, you know, to make all that work and function within a bait and still have it yep. absolutely perfect. And then, Lovely. you know, you got like the same thing with them, the interchangeable weights and then all, all the other brands that are doing things similar to that, just the finishes on them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's more or less like a, a, a Japanese thing originally. Um, it's just so cool to see the innovation that's occurred, particularly in that little aspect, and that yeah. it's tra- uh, that it's transferred across yeah, to the rest of them. other boats. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Man. But yeah, I think once people realise, I mean we still got a long way to go with it, but once people realise the, the opportunities and, and how important of a tool that thing is, it's it's really going to get some traction. Well, the more people that use it, the quicker it's going to... Yeah, exactly. The quicker it's going to grow, like the quicker everyone's going to learn from it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If only five people are using it, it's going to take a long time oh, to nut it time. out. That's right. If and dudes have been using, using them for it, a long time. Uh, dudes have been using them for a long time. Yeah. But it's not a majority thing because of those silly little things like you cast it out and it takes ages to sink yeah. so people go ah bugger you know this yeah. is a nuisance or you wind it just wind it and yeah, it looks shit they're, 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 well you know they look alright yeah. but it's just not it's not doing but what it, it can do to, to, a, to a fish do you remember the first time that you, you took someone and you fished a glide bait and how often they'd look down and go oh thinking that, a, a, yeah, that there was a fish, fish. <laughs> That yeah, it does happen, happen all, the, all time. the time. You you'd catch Especially it when you're using the big one. You're out of the corner of your eye, and you're like, "What's that?" And it's your lure. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. 